Hi, my name is Will Dean. I am the forest author. This is a very different video to my usual videos. If you, if you don't follow my channel, I normally talk about books, about writing, about forest life. I live in the center of a huge elk forest in Sweden. But this video is slightly different. I'm going to talk about watches. I have a real passion for vintage watches, especially affordable vintage watches. So I want to introduce my collection to you. Um, I'm a little different from most collectors in that I'm not obsessed or even particularly interested in brands. So you won't find Rolex, Patek Philippe or Omega in this collection. These are all quite obscure brands. I'm all about the particular piece and how it makes me feel when it's on my wrist. So I've been collecting for 15, 16, 17 years. And like I say, I'm not interested in, in showing off or having a watch recognized. I'm interested in hunting pieces that I really enjoy and then wearing them. But having said that, I do have a real appreciation and a real kind of nerdy obsession with, you know, 6263s or uh, double Swiss Daytonas. I love, you know, mono pusher Longines chronographs. I can, I can read for hours and hours and hours about a particular model of a 5513. I'll quite happily read like a long essay on the original Nautilus cork box. I can stare at a datagraph movement with a loop for hours, days maybe. As much as I love all of those things, I don't feel like I need to own them. You know, I'm, an, I'm a full-time author living in a Swedish forest, kind of off-grid. And I'm quite happy learning about those references, those models, handling them when I when I meet dealers, when I talk to other collectors, but I'm quite happy not owning them. The watches that I own don't cause me any uh, stress or, or worries whatsoever. They have no monetary value. They just have sentimental value. You know, I was wearing one of these watches when my five-year-old son took his first steps a few years back. I was wearing one of these watches when he lost his first tooth. I was wearing one of these watches when my agent called up and told me I had a book deal, you know? So they have value to me. They have memories attached to them. I was wearing one of them, one of the Panda chronographs when I got a call. I was in Spain. I got a call saying that Lionsgate had bought the TV and movie rights to my books. So they're very special to me in that way, but they're not valuable to anybody else. They're not valuable financially. For me, it's all about getting that balance right. I want to nerd out and be scholarly and learn about particular interesting movements and um, you know how, how hands are blued. You know, I love looking at articles about double stamp dials and things like that, but it's not something I'm going to have in my personal collection. It's something that I'm going to appreciate and learn more about and love in a kind of abstract sense. That's enough of me talking. I'm going to show you my collection as it stands now. It's not my complete collection. I have some more pieces in London. This is everything I have in the moose forest at the moment. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, I'm filming this outside in the forest in Sweden. So if you see a moose go past, that's fine. That's nothing to worry about. I'm wearing brown leather gloves as well because I, I own no white gloves. Um, so these should do the trick. This is a Hammer vintage chronograph. It's got this beautiful, what looks to me like an original crystal. It's got that nice kind of dappled glass effect that you see in old windows which I love in old houses and it's got a nice red blue uh, portion to the red blue white portion to the sub dial and the loom is fantastic I'll try and get it on a loom shot if I can't get it with this angle but the loom is gorgeous it's yellow it's kind of textured really nice bezel action keeps great time Okay, next up is this little Pepsi. This is a, a Lucerne. Lucerne are like a, not a fancy brand at all, but they, they made some nice looking watches back in the day. This has got a black, kind of a glossy black dial. It's Swiss made. The Pepsi bezel's in great shape, and it has also 
a lovely domed bezel and an orange accent on the seconds hand which I kind of like okay next up and as you can tell like I'm a sports watch guy I'm a tool watch guy I'm not really a dress watch guy this is a Lucas watch 25 jewel Bakelite bezel diver it's got a fantastic gray dial I'm a big fan of gray dials it's got like a lollipop seconds hand and it's got the most beautiful kind of bicolor loom especially that 12 o'clock loom marker which is gorgeous um, it's got a day date complication the, the Bakelite bezel blue white is just fantastic it's in really really good shape and it's got a lot of character you know and this is not a valuable watch none of these watches are valuable monetarily but they're really valuable to me next up another chronograph this is a Lucerne but it's just got one sub dial so it's more like a chrono stop than a chronograph I guess it's got this beautiful orange seconds hand and orange chrono hand so I put it on this orange strap for today I change straps a lot like twice a day on most of my watches I'm a real monster for changing straps and changing watches during the day I'm a full-time author so like the distraction is quite appealing to me I write a chapter or I edit something and then I come back and change a watch I'm a nerd and I live in a forest what can I say okay something non chronograph a lot of you will know this watch it's a universal Genève pole router and this example has gold tone kind of dauphine hands gold indices and this in my opinion stunning patina on the dial it's really something special it's got a nice also a nice domed crystal that spreads all the way out to the bezel it's got the original crown which is yeah, not that common and I'm going to show you the movement in a second because it's an absolutely stunning movement. This piece actually keeps really good time considering its age. It's a 1960s pole router in John Goldberger style. Just look at that. That micro rotor, the Geneva stripes. It's a very, very, very pretty movement in my opinion, especially at this price point. I bought this particular example quite a few years ago so it was inexpensive when I bought it it's a really pretty watch it's 35 millimeters it's a great kind of dress watch size next up something fun this is a Mulma compressor style twin crown diver Swiss made with this really cool bezel. It's got this nice kind of coloration. It's got black, white, blue, and red on the bezel, which I like a lot. Again, I'm a sucker for a domed crystal. I'm also a sucker for a scuba diver etching on the case back. And I, I don't know, I like the 12, 9, and 6 here. I like the red date. It reminds me a little bit of that kind of Aura 65 vibe. And it works like a dream, like it keeps great time, and I really enjoy wearing it. Next up, another chronograph, this time German made. This is a Meister Anker. It's got great coloration on the dial. Again, orange chrono hand, orange seconds hand, tritium loom markers, which is aged really nicely. Kind of a gray background dial, but almost racing kind of colors domed sapphire kind of tourneau barrel shape almost Meister Anker is not a well regarded kind of luxury brand it's like a, a fairly kind of watch of the people German brand and that's exactly what I go for in a watch for me that's what Rolex was you know 50 years ago Next up, I'm also a big fan of Panda dials, Panda chronographs. This is an Xactima Swiss-made chronograph. 
beautiful cream dial it's aged so so nicely really like the the symmetry of this dial with that 12 and the 6 and the fact that there's no like 9 or 6 sorry 9 or 3 marker it just literally says Exactima Chronograph Swiss Made two black subdials that are non round which I really enjoy and a red seconds sorry a red chrono hand wears great on the wrist like it on this strap a lot okay next up my first and only bullhead chrono I like bullhead chronographs they look kind of aggressive and sporty and different this is a reliac reliac like I love French, German, Swiss manufacturers who went out of business during the quartz crisis. Um, this one works really, really, really nicely. The chrono is really crisp and has a really nice positive action. Um, I like the fact that the date wheel is on the left, which is kind of bizarre. Um, the case is beat up, but I don't mind that on a big, hefty bull head like that. I have it on a a blue and orange NATO as you can see because it kind of emphasizes that orange chrono hand which I do enjoy there's a lot of patina on the dial on this watch some people would call that damage maybe it is but I enjoy wearing this I genuinely do next up this is a weird little thing. It's a it's a temperature it's a thermometer watch. There's a temperature gauge in the middle of the dial. Can you see that? With a really nicely high domed crystal. And that kind of encompasses the sensor for the thermometer. It says <laughs> the gauge goes down minus forty plus sixty. I'm not sure this watch would survive now at either of those two extreme temperatures, but it's a fun watch. It's like it's a it's a talking point. It's a nice little Swiss made number. I think it's about 35, 36 millimeters. Enjoy it. Another Panda. Another Panda. This is kind of oversized actually, even for today's market. It's 40 millimeters, but because it's almost square, it wears big. It wears almost too big for my wrist. My wrist is seven and a quarter inches, and this is a big piece. Um, it says on the dial Kiensley Swiss 17 joules Inca block tritium dial and it has I don't know if you can see that the most stunning tritium patinaed loom dots at the end of each indices let me wind this a little I'll hold it to the microphone John Mayer can talk about crunchy movements then I will too I don't know if you can catch that in the light out here in the forest but the dial is gorgeous red hands, red chrono hand red on the indices and then that beautiful kind of burnt custard patina loom Next up, a, another chronograph with orange hands. This is a Clyder. Um, also not valuable in any way. Wears very, very large on the wrist as well. I think it's like 40 millimeters, but it wears bigger. It's very solid, as you can see. I think this is kind of new old stock from the 70s. It's in very crisp condition. A few little marks on the crystal, but that's all love the asymmetric subdials. they're very retro they're very very kind of 70s i enjoy 70s style um fun piece okay final watch for this little vintage collection is this edma this is a Kind of Pepsi bezel, very 70s, kind of TV shaped, world time bezel, inner rotating bezel thing. 
again the loom check out the loom and the way it's aged it's got a really really lovely kind of texture to it it's getting puffy it's getting yellow I like the uh, typography they've used on the 12 6 and 9 and I like the way that the Pepsi colors are echoed on that inner rotating bezel And that's it guys that is the vintage collection from the Swedish forest lots of sports watches lots of chronographs a few panda dials a bit of Bakelite a universal Genève pole router nothing of monetary value but watches that I genuinely love I've been collecting these for the last 15 16 years buying in selling out I'm not interested in things that everybody else collects I'm not interested in valuable things that everybody will recognize on the beach or in a bar I'd rather have unusual pieces that maybe are not very well respected in terms of the movements but that catch my eye and that I enjoy wearing so that's the state of the collection 2019 thank you very much